Okay, we have one minute. We'll be starting in one minute. Hi, Candice. Okay, we'll be getting started momentarily. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Office of Diversity and Inclusion Speaker Series. I'm so excited to be able to host our guest today and have a conversation with him. Before I get into um, our guest and our conversation, just want to welcome everyone. We have such a large turnout today. I'm so excited about the number of people that have joined us. Thank you so much for registering and taking time out to be with us today. My name is Annette Johnson. I work in the Office of Diversity and Inclusion and I am the Diversity and Inclusion Specialist. And just a little bit of background about the ODI Speaker Series and why we're doing this. We uh, launched this program to be able to speak with people across the campus, faculty, staff, and students within their respective areas um, of research or education, and, and just to talk to them about their expertise and how it aligns to and relates with diversity and inclusion. And so that's why we're hosting this and we're excited to be able to speak with our, our guests today. Just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, I have everyone on mute to minimize the background noise. And so please mute or, or stop your video as well. This way you won't show up on the screen. If you have a question or a comment, please put it in the chat. And I will, we're going to reserve time towards the end to be able to get to as many questions and comments as we can. April is Autism Awareness Month. And actually, April 2nd was Autism Awareness Day. And it's an internationally recognized Awareness Day. And so our guest, Wilfried, is going to talk more about that as we get into the discussion and his involvement as a self-advocate and an advocate for uh, people with disabilities. And so um, I am going to get us started. But first, what I want to do is, so something happened that's a little bit different. So I have a reservation system that I monitor for people who register. And we had a large number, over 140 people registered for this discussion today. But they also posted comments, which normally does not happen. And so I wanted to just pause for a minute before um, Will and I start our discussion and share some of those comments, because I want people, uh, participants, to know that I saw your comments, and I want Will to hear some of those comments as well. So Will has made quite an impression as an advocate for inclusion and developing understanding of a, of a diverse topic um, within an exciting world. I'm so proud to know Will. He is quite the leader. I look forward to hearing from Will. I look forward to hearing Will share his experience. Will has, one of, has been one of my amazing students in high school, and I'm so proud of his graduation from college. Will has an elementary, Will was an elementary student in my school. We are all so proud of him and his grit to succeed. So Will, I just want, I thought that was so nice that people took time out to put those comments in the reservation system and I wanted to share them. So without further ado, Will, welcome to the ODI speaker series. Yep. Thank you guys for all tuning in to today from across the country. I just want to thank all my college professors, all my coworkers, former teachers, administrators, friends, disability advocates, people who coach me in basketball, people that I coach with for all tuning in today and family members and relatives because you because you guys have all made a positive um, impact um, of my life. And I want to reserve a lot of time for, um, for you guys to learn um, my story and get to ask a bunch of questions today. So Will, how are you? Thank you for joining us. I know it's busy with you wrapping up things for the semester. So thank you so much for agreeing to do this. How are you? How is your family? 
Um, I'm doing very well, and everyone in my family um, is is doing very well. And my uh, little sister Marnie, who's five years old, is just so excited and has been a wonder of, of joy. And all my family, my other brother Josh, my mom Stephanie, my dad of Kenny, and all my relatives and parents are are doing very well, and they're all just very happy with with, with how my um, journey played out. And and everyone has been keeping um, in touch with me during these past um, couple of weeks, and and I'm just very excited to be here to talk to you all. So I'm so glad to hear that you're well, your family is well during this time. And I'm so excited. I've been anticipating this for weeks. We've had conversations preparing for this. And I'm so excited that the time is here. So we're going to jump right in. Um, I could go through your bio and, and tell people all about you, but I want to reserve that. Um, for our discussion and so that you can have an opportunity to share with people some of the great things that you've been involved with, your advocacy work, your leadership positions, intern positions. So we're going to jump right in. So the first question I have for you is what made you choose Salisbury University? Yeah, so what made me um, choose Salisbury University during the um, spring of 2016 was um, at the time, like I was very interested in becoming an elementary school teacher in the younger grades and Salisbury University was known for um, being a teacher's college and during March of 2016 I visited um, a couple schools and went to an open house um, at Salisbury University where I really enjoyed the excitement of the students how friendly everybody was and getting the opportunity to learn about the early childhood education program where I met Dr. Um, Chen and I was very convinced and and as well that we had an athletic um, coaching minor because I was very interested as well as coaching um, mm -hmm. sports at the time and and just going around campus I fell in love with this place and happy to be a seagull. Nice and then now you're graduating in May um, from the Cater program conflict analysis and dispute yeah. resolution. What made you choose that as a major? Yeah, so um, I originally was not a conflict analysis um, and dispute resolution major. So what made me choose it was during my first um, semester in college, I was taking a foundations of conflict analysis and dispute resolution um, course called Cater 200 taught by our very well known Alexander Gunta Martin. And, and I just really enjoyed going to that class every day and I was learning a lot about conflict um, resolution skills as I was adjusting to mm -hmm. my collegiate life at Salisbury University with having a disability. And, and, and during the second semester of college um, at Salisbury University, my freshman year, like I learned that I wanted to do more than just help people inside the classroom. And I was talking about the Cater program a lot. And I really just enjoyed how conflict analysis and dispute resolution can help me with disability advocacy and help it impact organizations and get to have opportunities to connect with a lot of different people. Wow, that sounds really exciting. Can you just share a little bit, like what have you learned from the program that you think has, has positioned you and prepared you to continue with the work? Yeah, you yeah. so I've definitely learned a lot about organizational conflict, um, mediation, social um, process um, theories, um, and how you have to have a passion for what you're doing to um, stay um, involved in what you're doing. Like I'm in, in disability advocacy and, and I had to learn about sharing my story, impacted others and connect to the course content as well as finding material from the, from the news that, that, that can help you solve in, in your area to help you grow with your career. Wow. So can talk a little bit about what you have enjoyed most about being at SU. You seem to really enjoy your, your, your academic studies and, and being a part of that program. What else have you enjoyed about being at SU? Yeah, so um, I definitely really enjoyed going to the um, athletic events all throughout my years and coming in first place in our Siegel Nation um, challenge. For all you guys that are not familiar with Salisbury University, we have a, a contest where people go check in on the on the Seagull Nation app um, at different athletic games and, and you check in for like 10 points a game and the top five from this contest get to win a prize. And I've last year I won a thousand dollars and I'm waiting to hear what they're gonna do wow. um, 
yeah, again, and I've definitely enjoyed getting to play um, basketball with all my friends and make a lot of lasting um, relationships in our MAGS physical ac activities um, center and getting to work as an intramural official and supervisor in the intramural department under Wayne Garrow for mm -hmm. four years. And I have met just so many uh, great people and I've worked with so many great officials. And I want to give a shout out here to Ryan Green for tuning in because you have meant a lot during the last two years when I have got to work with you. And, and I've always wanted to learn from you as well when I got to work with you the, the last two years. Um, I've also enjoyed getting to be vice president and president of Hillel of Salisbury University, which is our national Jewish student organization and building a relationship with um, all the group members in my organization, as well as just being taught by all the, the, these wonderful professors who have helped me grow inside and outside of the classroom. So you've had, you, so I, I started last April and I remember always seeing you across campus. And um, I remember when, when we first met and you were very welcoming and always checking in with me to see how, you know, how I was doing and how I was enjoying Salisbury University. So I really appreciate that. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, you, you seem really excited when you're talking about sports. Talk about how having that position, that leadership position has helped you and helped your advocacy work. Yeah, so it definitely has helped me because like before I came to college, I started coaching people at Coach Wooten's basketball camp. And I learned from working with with those coaches that you need to have like a lot of passion for what you do. And coaching is definitely transferable skills. And when I took on some leadership positions at Salisbury University, I knew that I had to learn and how to build a group culture and get some unity in our groups and and definitely being taught by one of our amazing professors in leadership dr ron sires has definitely taught me about how you have to model the way for people which kuzis and posner talk about challenge the process encourage the heart enables others to um to act as well and, and it's definitely helped me grow and especially being part of so many leadership journeys for Salisbury University by helping working with the previous president of the Delta Alpha Pi Disability Honor Society, Molly Jewel, on, on getting our space in your office area with the Center for Equity, Justice, mm -hmm. and Inclusion for People with Dis Disabilities. And, and what Christy Harper has definitely taught me as a leader in her outdoor education classes that you have to go out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Yes, you um, you are currently the president of the Disability Resource Group, which is in Blackwell, and it's a part of the Center for Equity, Justice, and Inclusion. Can you talk a little bit about that group, what, what it means, what you've done? Yeah, so yeah, so right now, um, I'm the president of Delta Alpha Pi, which oversees our Disability Resource Group, and, and I'm comprised of Vice President Jessica Pierce, who's going to be taking me over for me as president next year, and then Secretary Cassandra um, Blake and um, Treasurer Layla Bones for the last two years. Um, and we have definitely like worked to try to raise awareness through different um, disability um, research showing that we can accomplish things with the disability by getting different national um, competitive fellowships. Um, I mean, as, as well as just trying to develop programs and initiatives with faculty and staff and showing how you can use universal learning design across the um, curriculum, as well as getting people that are faculty um, and staff to come to our like Disability Honor Society inductions, which are coming up soon. And last year, like I definitely worked with my president, Molly An and Molly Jewell, on mm -hmm. getting provost uh, Dr. Olmsted, who's definitely a good believer in, in our disability advocacy work that she's done with having a child, Lincoln, who's amazing, a friend of mine now, with with down syndrome and, and definitely talking about how we can all unity to, together and, and come together for our same disability issues mm -hmm. and so i want to i want to transition into your advocacy work because you have done some amazing um work while still focusing on your um academic uh responsibilities as well and you worked with an organization called tash can you tell us what that organization what tash stands for and a little bit about the organization and, and the work that you've done yeah, so yeah, so TASH does just goes by um TASH um now and they're an international disability rights organization which focuses on human rights, inclusive education, 
recreation um, employment and and they're based out of Washington um, DC now and 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 basically what they work to do is like to to try to promote full inclusion through every day throughout of um throughout our lives mm -hmm. in in education um, um and recreation and they were one of the first organizations to uh, fight for um include full inclusion in spe in in education and and during my time as an intern for Tash I conducted a brief um research study about how um, different professors from different kinds of universities, high school teachers, high school um, administrators have their knowledge about transition and um, disability and, 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 and sort of to see about how this country can work on making sure that students with disabilities are helped once they get to higher education from their support system, as well as presenting at their national conference this past December in Phoenix, Arizona, where I presented on soaring as a pro-disability advocate and talking about how I had to adapt to college at Salisbury University with a disability and having to learn how to become my own learning specialist and how to educate other professors to, to, to about different disability accommodations and as well as presenting with my good friend and colleague from Tash, another intern with me there, Jake. Goodman about how different colleges and universities can make extracurricular life um, better and more inclusive for people with disabilities. That's such a huge accomplishment. How did it feel going from being an intern um, and, and participating in the organization at the level that you did, but but now you're on the big stage at a conference? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it felt, I mean, just definitely amazing be, because Jake um, Goodman and I won like the on um, the first place um, in the poster presentation on our extracurricular disability um, group for self advocates, which are people with disabilities, and there have been a lot of people who have been self advocates for a long time, and definitely the respect that um, that the disability community has for us shows that we can have a long career and make impact and influence change just at this young. Yeah, and I have to tell you, Will, I've only known you a short period of time, but you are a true role model. You're a true role model, and not just for people with disabilities, but for everyone who has goals and objectives and are, you know, looking to um, advocate for themselves in whatever way that they need to. So you're, you're definitely a role model. And I want to talk a little bit more about what self-advocacy means. Like, what does that mean to you? Yeah, so self-advocacy um, sort of means more to people with um disabilities advocating for um, disability rights issues. And, and in my term, we don't like to use self-advocates. We need to all become, um, be, um, be called advocates. And, and, and it shows that, that now that there's been organizations such as the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network, known as ASAN, run by people with, with autism, for people as, as autism, and, and we're able to help our community su succeed and provide the best services and advocacy possible and all work together as one big community. Mm -hmm. Now this is Autism Awareness Month. For people who may not know what that means, can you just give us a little bit, a little bit of an overview of, of autism? Yeah, yeah. So what this Autism Awareness Month is sort of known for and what autism is, I mean autism is basically a learning and neurological um, disability that can be from completely like nonverbal at all to being completely high functioning known um, as Asperger's and, it, and, and some people that are nonverbal might be using what is called a facilitated communication device using argumentative and argumentative devices to help them communicate and speak and connect with each other from people on, no, formerly known as Asperger's who are completely high functioning and, and are able to study a lot and learn and observe so much material and have such a great memory which um, I um, have and yeah and definitely this month is basically to show that we can all be um, more um, inclusive and, and show people the in um, the right way for autism and connect them to the right people and org and organizations. 
I want to I want to explore um, that a little bit further and get your um, your ad, your advice or recommendations for how we SU Salisbury University community can be more inclusive. Um, but before we talk about specific steps, can you can you share some of the challenges that you've experienced and how have you overcome them? Yeah. So when I first I mean came to Salisbury University, um, I had to basically um, learn to advocate for my own ac accommodations to like my professors because when you go to high school you have a case manager who's a special education teacher in your building who will send out your accommodation letter to all your professors and they I mean teachers and they talk with them and communicate with them and when you get to higher education with FERPA it's our students responsibility to communicate the accommodations to your um, professors and tell you why how this will benefit your you in the classroom and 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 the higher education model versus k through 12 and k through 12 you will have teachers who have taken a pedagogical training class on special education and disabilities and not all disciplines and majors in higher education definitely like require the use of a pedagogical um training class for people with um disabilities um, in their classroom um, as well as just having to be more of an advocate for for myself to um, to show that I can succeed with having a disability um, and definitely just communicating with others and um, and adjusting to having a roommate for the first time when I mm. got got to college and 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 knowing our own boundaries mm -hmm. and and definitely getting excited to meet different groups of people at Salisbury University has been amazing. Mm -hmm. So talk about the resources that you that you use to help you navigate. Yeah, so yeah, so for my first week um, in college, um, I use the Disability Resource Center um, heavily to seek out how I can become a better advocate. And Candace Henry, thank you so much for these um, four years of just being there and helping me um, succeed. And all of your advice has been um, amazing, as, um, as well as using my amazing faculty from day one and i want to give a shout out to dr amber meyer who's here who's just been amazing and going above and beyond during her office hours to help me um succeed and and you can just enjoy a lot of your moments when you get to have those office hours time with your professors and yeah and it definitely helps you grow because your professors get to learn about you and how they can best help you as well as using the tutoring and writing center resources, which our Disability Resource Center at Salisbury University does an amazing job training and connecting with them on how they can support the students um, best um, with disability, as well as creating just support groups of great friends and study groups of people that will help you succeed and be there for you whenever you need. So I want to break this down just a little bit, right? Faculty, staff, and students, because you've worked with everyone over your, your past four years. What message or what would you share with faculty? You've had some great experiences and you've had people that have supported you and helped you on this journey. Is there anything you would share with faculty that you would encourage them to continue to do or start doing um, for students who are going to be, be joining us? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely have faculty come together as allies and come up with different strategies from their disciplines about how they can use the knowledge together to be coming up with different disability strategies um, in the classroom. Start an effort together to form a campus-wide disability like education committee where we can have faculty and staff who can learn more about having interest in disability and definitely coming together to show that, that, that they can have support for students with disabilities, not just their students, but any student with a disability that needs support because a student like myself with a disability will wanna know that you care for them and will be just so excited to learn from somebody that, that has so much investment in them. Wow, you use the word ally. So um, again, one or two things, what, what can we do to be better allies for those students who are coming following in your footsteps? Yeah, just be able to go um, out of your comfort zone and ask them, what is the best way that I can um, help you succeed? And maybe ask them about some past um, experiences that might have not gone as well with their, uh, with their disability accommodations and see what I can do in my classroom to, to provide you 
with the best resources and how can I be supportive of you during your college career here in, in, in this course and for the rest of your future? I think that's great advice because sometimes we don't want to make a mistake. You know, we don't want to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. And so I think just having that courage, we're not perfect. You know, we just want to, we want to create an environment where everybody feels like they are, they're included and they belong. And so sometimes you're right. It's asking the question, what can I do differently? Or what can I do better? Or what do you need from me? Asking those questions can go a long way. What about for students who are coming um, behind you and may not feel that comfortable with seeking out resources? What, what, what advice would you give them? Yeah, I mean, I would say maybe go with a couple friends and they can have you support them, take you to the resources that you need to go. Maybe ask your resident hall director, your RA, and see, like, how can I best help you, like, succeed inside? Um, and outside of the classroom and maybe join a student organization or create an organization which Salisbury University just has done. I mean, just in the fact in this semester, I mean, we've had people creating new organizations just based on their interest, even one based on a TED Talk mm -hmm. club interests. And people will, will happy to join whatever you want to do or create something new. Be, and don't and maybe ask others about how you can be a trailblazer to be a better seagull here in Seagull Nation. Great advice, great advice. Now you have a special um, internship assignment that you got this uh, this semester, I believe, right? Yes. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So for the second spring semester um, in a row, I've gotten to have the opportunity to intern for the city of Salisbury Mayor's Office with with such a great and wonderful team who's been more um, and, and eye-opening. And I got to work on creating their city, um, like Movies on the River event series, which is now in their second year um, in a row and getting to work on some movie um, I, ideas for the whole community, as well as getting to work on, on, on ideas for autism and awareness and how as a city we can look at how, helping our employees who might have kids on the autism spectrum or help um, as a community, as well as starting the initiative to take the lead on the children's health, mental health matters campaign and talking about different children's mental health disorders and how in the office we can maybe do different dress up days or different education, lunch and learn and help as a city grow together on these things. Well, we'll, we'll talk about Trailblazer. I think you were a trailblazer in the fact that you're the first intern for for the city of Salisbury, is that no, correct? no, I'm not no. No, oh, you're not. Okay, I thought I read somewhere where you were the, where you were. That the, was for um, APSI under Jenny Stonemeyer. Okay, okay, but that sounds amazing. So, um, and so you did that for two semesters. Yes. Yeah, I am a big fan of Mayor Jake, and think he's just doing a wonderful job in in Salisbury, and um, think he has an amazing team. So that's that's exciting to hear that you had an opportunity to uh, to work with them. So um, I have a question: How do you balance everything? So you are so busy. You have your 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 academic work that you're doing. You're an advocate. You have intern positions. You've had leadership positions on campus. What, what do you do for fun? How do you balance all of this? I think, I think it's definitely, um, as a coach, um, people talk in sports about how you create that supporting cast. You bring, like, you have people that, that are your friends who, who are definitely act like starters and just super um, starters, and you have a calendar. Like, you definitely balance yourself out. You, you create an important to-do list and make sure you get your work done before you go out and have all this fun and show what you're passionate about and going above and beyond your classes by going to your professors during office hours and showing about how I can do better and how this can help me inside and outside of the classroom. Great. And I, I want to explore that a little bit more because you truly are a leader and you've had so many experiences and opportunities to develop your leadership skills, which is such an important skill when you think about your career and, you know, moving forward and getting out to the work world. So how are the different positions, um, whether it's, you know, you volunteered or you had an internship or a leadership role on campus, how have those things, those positions prepared you as a leader? Yeah, so like I definitely had to learn a lot of different skills on the spot and what our um, career center employee, Crystal Dickerson, 
talks about is that you have to be like very like versatile and not always go and do the same thing. Like I spent some time coaching on the basketball court where you get to learn some leadership skills. When I was with APSI and TASH, I had to do a little bit more office um, database and, and, and inventory stuff. And that definitely helped me learn and be comfortable using the Microsoft off, Office Suite. Um, and definitely um, when I was with the city of Salisbury mayor's office, I had to develop some event planning and, and marketing and, and skills and outreach mm -hmm. skills, which has helped me as a disability advocate on, on the national level and, and, and always wanting to learn more. Wow. You have quite the impressive resume. So I know that you have something on the horizon, some news that you want to share with us. So what is next for Will Freed? Yeah, so um, in the fall semester, I have made a decision that I'm gonna go for my master's in higher education in student affairs at Fort Hayes State University in Hayes, um, Kansas, where I get to be in, in a program where I'm taught by the former president and vice president of student affairs of that institution and Dr. Um, Hammond. Um, and I wanna thank my new colleagues from Fort Hayes State University for coming um, on this webinar today. And during my time at Fort Hayes State, I'm gonna be the graduate assistant in the accessibility services office under the direction of accessibility services advisor, Jennifer Pfeiffer, and I'm very excited. Um, and for the long term, I definitely wanna work in a disability resource center office in higher education or a student life and involvement office as well as working with a bunch of my disability advocacy friends across the country to create a disability organization run by people with disabilities for people with disabilities. And, and, and I definitely wanna use that organization as a resource to help my students in a, in a disability resource center succeed and, and have a bunch of outreach and mentors and allies. Congratulations, Will. I, I mean, that's such a perfect role for you and you will be able to take everything that you've learned and all your skills and your education, your experience and help other people um, be able to thrive and succeed as you have. So congratulations, wish you all the best. I think it's safe to say that on behalf of Salisbury University, we are gonna miss you and we wish you all the best and thank you for everything that you've done um, uh, to be a role model uh, for, the, for the university. And so um, I wanna say this, I wanna get a copy of your first book because I think you have a book in you. So make sure I'm on the list for my personalized signed book because <laughs> you've accomplished so much. And when that book is written and, and published, I wanna be, I'm gonna be the first person, I'm one of the first people online to get my signed copy. All right, so you're ready to move into some of the questions that um, have been submitted. Uh, a couple of questions that came in through the reservation system um, I captured and I want to share those with you. So let me get to my questions. Um, wrote these down. Okay. One of the questions is how did um, your high school, how did your grammar and high school um, experience prepare you for college? Yeah, so it definitely uh, taught me, like when I got to middle school and to prepare for high school, that I had to think more um, independently because when I was in elementary school, I was relying more on assistance from my special education teachers and paraprofessionals and, and learned that in order to stay on the education track that I wanted to, I had to think more independently and use a lot of my own more um, intelligence and, and and it was hit hard um, in eighth grade and I I mean to think more independently on my essays and assignments which prepared me for high school where I had to think more independently and not rely on someone holding um, a hand and, mm -hmm. and, and, um, and and that definitely prepared me for college when I like when I discovered my passion in the academic field and disability advocacy and disability studies where I can think like a scholar to be a scholar. And my amazing English 103 instructor, now a doctoral candidate at University of Oklahoma, Casey Jones, definitely taught me that I had to think like a scholar for the first time um, when, um, when I got to college. And, and definitely from my middle school and high school experiences, like when I overcame a lot of challenges with friendship 
um, and social anxiety, like I learned that I had to become out of my comfort zone and make sure that I have a great supportive group of friends on mm -hmm. my campus and from the community and, 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 and through whatever role I do. And, and it's definitely been amazing. And I've made a lot of great relationships in all of my position throughout all my stops. I, I think that's very important. I want to just pause on that for a minute. The, the, the network piece, right? So creating and building a network for yourself where you're surrounded by people who are positive, who are like-minded, um, and, you know, who can be supportive and, and also be a resource for you. So I think that's, that's something that's very important. Um, one of the other questions submitted was, what do you consider the three most, the three most challenges ahead for you? Yeah, um, yeah, I sort of think that not um, every employer is going to be open about me disclosing um, my disability. And, um, and I definitely talked with that with some of my friends about how they've had some employers that don't even feel comfortable with, um, with them saying that they're even a um, disability advocate, um, as well as trying eventually when I'm comfortable to learn how to drive or, or, or have to live in a city that's more disability accessible where there's efficient public um, transportation mm -hmm. um, as well um, as well as learning to gel with others in, in new teams and not trying to take control in any places where I go I, like I want to have that sort of balance with all these people. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you have you have such an amazing network. I'm sure you're going to stay connected, stay connected to your mentors and your your coaches and everyone that will be be readily available to help you as you continue on your on your journey. I'm going to go into this to the chat now and see what we have here. Um, okay, here's a question: How can um, how can public school systems how can we educate public school systems on the importance of including self-advocacy goals in um, a student IEP? Yeah, so it definitely like talks about, like one of my colleagues from TASH, Ali DeYoung, talked about, about how we need to have the power in student-directed meetings, in, in the IEP meetings, definitely have the students involved with their IEP planning process once they're 14. And, or 13 and allowed to go sit in those meetings and discuss with their parents and teachers what goals are are they meeting mm -hmm. and and what they can do to improve and ask a lot of feedback and that's what I definitely did during my high school years um, I want to thank my speech pathologist from high school who's listening here Miss Bronstein for letting me always talk with her about how I can improve my goals and start to take the own power of my own education because like a lot of people in the disability advocacy field talk about how once you get, get to college, you need to start taking control of your own education. And, and starting that in high school can definitely help people go on the right path with what they want to choose. Wow, that, sound, that sounds really good. I am just, um, let me just, I'm trying to navigate this and look and see. Okay, here's another question. Um, what words of encouragement would you give upcoming college students with disabilities? Yeah, so um, I would um, definitely do that. Like, you're going to have to challenge yourself and, and get out of your comfort zone and be willing to go make new um, relationships as well as be comfortable at, at certain times to people that you enjoy disclosing um, your disability and, and ask questions to your professors because you may not have professors who have taught students with disabilities or have the, the disability pedagogical education um, training courses and get them a chance to learn from you as well because I've had professors that have enjoyed learning from me and what I have given with my background of overcoming obstacles with having a disability. It's definitely a great storyline and a partnership to have once you get into higher education. Okay. Um, let me see what else we have here. How has your Jewish faith helped you as an advocate? Yeah, so it, it's definitely um, helped me a lot because there's a lot of well-known people in the Jewish disability advocacy community known such as um, Judy Human, who was the former assistant secretary for the Department of Education. And it's definitely connected me to a lot of people through my internships and advocacy work um, to, um, to stay very close and tight with the Jewish 
disability um, advocacy community and I still talk and connect with them like weekly and it's it's definitely been amazing that we all have similar goals from a similar religion that we are a part of. Okay, we have a student from the University of North Carolina going in as a freshman, any um, who is a, a, a person who is studying special education um, and is um, a person with a disability, any general advice you have for that person? Yeah. yeah, I would definitely share, be ready to be a role model for your students. Don't be afraid to talk about your struggle from your learning and definitely incorporate that in and, 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 and learn other ways that are being taught in special education with new technology, new, new teaching strategies. And don't be afraid to connect with your past um, teachers to see about how you can develop into becoming um, a great teacher um, and definitely create a support teaching team and learning support network of teachers that can help you overcome the, um, the obstacles um, as well as like when you get into student teaching, be aware that like your university can support you with those um, accommodations because you're taking a class um, through um, the university and everyone is here to support you. So can we can we pause for a minute and talk about the Disability Resource um, Center because um, that's a resource that's available in, in most colleges, if, if not all. Um, can you talk about how you benefited from that and how it's of value to, to students? Yeah, so um, I've definitely um, benefited from it because we have staff that are there to talk with you and come up with individual goals and whatever supports you need to access anything on campus from recreation, dining, to learning, to uh, assistive Tech, technology and without the Disability Resource Center and the amazing staff that we have of Fawn, Candice, Nicole, and, and, and Emily, and Kate McDonald, who um, um, who I was with for the first three years of my college career at Salisbury University. Like you guys have done a nominal job and you guys do a lot of outreach to faculty um, and, and staff. And without this, I don't think we would be able to succeed as much because we have people that are advocates in this office for us and the work that they do as advocating for us has inspired me to keep on advocating for the other students and definitely influenced my role into going working in a disability resource center at Fort Hayes State University as a graduate assistant. Okay. Another question came in, are there, what would you recommend in terms of additional resources that SU might wanna consider for, for students with uh, disabilities? Yeah, so um, I definitely think that we need to create a campus-wide um, disability community, which could be an ad hoc committee involving students, faculty, staff, people from our shared governance structure who have an interest in disability um, issues in education or might have overcome obstacles to come together and come together um, as a community and be resources for each other me, me, because I've done a research, really research on this, and there are a lot of universities across the country that have these sort of communities, um, as well as showing di different disability awareness films, such as Crip Camp, which usually, which recently came out on Netflix, which shows the start of the disability rights movement, and 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 definitely, um, I really liked engaging in conversation with Dr. Aaron Sulberg about this, about how it's important to maybe incorporate that film in the school in a diverse society class because it's a good film which talks about disability ed education as well as we can maybe work together with the disability advisory committee from the city of, of Salisbury and work mm -hmm. together as one whole big mm -hmm. um, disability community and keep on doing disability awareness um, panels like we have done, and, and I'm so excited for you guys about the hard work that Candace Henry has done to start the Powerful Abilities men, new mentoring program where students with disabilities will be able to come in a few days early and get acclimated to the um, college life um, at, Salis, at Salisbury University. Yeah, that's, a, that's gonna be exciting. Um, here's another question. Are there any services or resources that you would like to have seen in SU libraries to help support students? Um, I, I mean, I think, like, I mean, I like that we can maybe um, have, like, more, like, examples of maybe some more, like, 
citation, um, like ma manuals about, about, about how they can go with like us and like demonstrate about like using the different sort of um, citations because I've had to use like a lot of that stuff online and and, and I've still some days been having some trouble with, with trying to get some things properly cited and 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 I've really loved about how helpful our instructional resource librarians are with with helping us we need the support with those um, um, citations as well as maybe making sure that we have books and literature by authors with um, disabilities and maybe working together with the Disability Resource Center to maybe host an author reading or book or lecture um, on an author with a disability. So I'm gonna de definitely make a footnote so that when you, be when you publish your first book, we're gonna have you come back <laughs> and uh, be, be our first author. Um, here's another question. This is from a, an SU student. If you could ask one thing from students that do not identify as having a disability, what would it be? Yeah, um, yeah, that we have like overcoming challenges that we have to face um, every day. And, and, and definitely like we want the support from, um, for you all and it's gonna help us grow inside and outside the classroom. Very good. Um, let me see, what else do we have here? What has leadership, what has your leadership positions taught you about yourself? That I need to go out of my comfort zone and learn how to be very versatile, not just run a program, market a program, use your um, sales pitches. You have to find the right people that want to be part of your group or club. And that can start with recruitment and, and definitely creating a group of people that all want to be together, who can all inspire a shared vision together. Good, good. Um, here's another. How did you overcome the challenges you had when you ran into bias against some of your personal qualities like autism issues or being Jewish in an area where it is a small minority and not always accepted in the kindest way? Yeah, um, I would say that you have to create a very close unit um, alley of people that identify similar as you. And, um, and that's why like I've got involved in, as vice president VP of both Hillel and Delta Alpha Pi to show about how we can be tight knit and, and, and show that we can still achieve in the areas where there are some issues against um, this, this bias and that we all still belong here. And so um, this is a question from me. Um, if you were a part of a, a think tank um, talking about ways that we, or strategies that we can identify to um, cultivate a more inclusive campus for Salisbury University, from the people with disabilities perspective, what are a couple of things you would want us to make sure that we capture? Yeah, to, um, to make sure that we are included the best possible way not just inside the classroom through extracurricular um life which includes i would say greek life because there have been a lot of stories across the country of greek life chapters not giving bids to people with disabilities for a bunch of un um certain reasons maybe like having maybe people that that can serve more as advocates to be allowed to play more inclusive in in recreational settings because some people might not want them to be part of this with the gym also what ball state university has done work work with like the intramural department on maybe doing a wheelchair basketball tournament where anybody not just with a disability can play and see how it feels to have a disability and at salisbury university we are so lucky and fortunate to have dr dean ravitsa who's just an amazing person in an adaptive physical activity and, and we can all definitely work with him on creating some campus-wide programs and working with our amazing Wayne Garo on, on those things in your murals. Very good. Let me see if there's what else do we have in here. Um, let me see. Do you have any advice for housing and residence life professionals on how we can best provide support? Yeah, I mean, I definitely um, think that to not put a person with a disability in a single room is not always 
the best thing, but like that can be an option if they choose to have for, um, for certain reasons, maybe, maybe like have groups of students with disabilities that are having similar things, have some discussions with their resident assistants and resident directors and making sure that we get the adequate training on scenarios in higher education, not just like a disability definition and how it can be applicable. And so how did you, what are some of the things that you did to um, just get yourself familiar with the campus and get acclimated when you came, on, came as a freshman? What, what are some of the things that you've done? Um, I, I joined a bunch of clubs and organizations. I participated in intramural sports with my hallmates where I got to play in an intramural championship um, a volleyball game with them, which was um, a lot of fun and definitely going out to the campus wide events, which are amazing student activities director of uh, Trisha Garvey Smith, director of student involvement and leadership puts on with her team and definitely creating relationships of people you meet from going to different events and lectures yeah. on campus. Very good, very good. And I'm sure now, so some people are extroverted. It's easier for them to do that. Some people are more, more introverted. Do you have any advice for the students who might be really shy or more introverted? Like how can they get yeah. themselves connected? Yeah, start just by meeting a few friends or joining a club based on your interest and passion or starting a new one if there isn't one. And with Salisbury University, it's an easy process. You, know, you only have to get like at least five members come to the director of student involvement and leadership and fill out some forms and, and develop a constitution and, and it can grow from there based on what you're passionate and want to do. Okay. Okay. I have um, a question from you. It's for you. It says, hi, Will. This is Coach Floyd from Volo Kids. How can youth sports organizations do a better job of accommodating youth with disabilities? What training do you know of that we can have our staff go through? Yeah. So, yeah. So you can sign up for um, the ADA basic training if you just search it into Google and that gives things on the Americans with um, Disabilities Act. You can also work with maybe with Special Olympics and see what they do with, with their coaches um, training, um, as well as maybe like for certain um, di disabilities, people with disabilities, maybe give them a one-on-one -on -one like coach to monitor them, not just be directly with them, but someone who, who can look um, after with them and, and talk with the parents about what their experience have been in past programs and how you can develop their, and, and have a great time for them based on what you can do um, as a staff. And maybe during your volunteer coaches training, maybe go over some scenarios with people um, with disabilities. And someone posted in the website here, www.adabasics.org for those who um, are, are interested. So um, I have another question. Um, we talked about what you liked most about Salisbury University. What are you going to miss the most about Salisbury University? Yeah, um, I'm definitely going to miss all the amazing professors and staff who've helped me so much. I mean, just winning the Siegel Nation um, first place, getting the um, chance to be part of an amazing intramural staff at Salisbury University where I've developed some great close relationships um, and I want to let you guys know that I mean I like I just enjoyed training all these newer officials and especially getting um to um, to work with some younger ones this year who are newer the um, department and Mike Jones um, Michael McCormick Anthony um, Grosso and Spencer Leifer just getting to have fun and working with all you guys has definitely always made my joy and, and made my, my time worth it um, with you guys and, and I'll definitely miss my um, family there as well as thank you to like all my Hillel of Salisbury University Club members who've, um, who've been an amazing part of this journey this year and letting me helping you guys change the structure of the meetings and make it more into hangouts for um, all you guys in developing programs based on your interests. And I hope you guys can just keep on, keep on this going and having the passion to run this amazing um, or organization and, and as well as just making so many friends from playing basketball and mags physical activity center. I'm going to miss that a lot. 
We're definitely, we're definitely going to miss you. I have some messages that have popped up. This is from Julia Glanz. She works at the mayor's office. It says, Will, everyone at the mayor's office and city are so proud of you. Thanks for all you've done for our citizens. Can't wait to see where you go from here. Um, this is from Sierra Sherman. Hey, Will, keep up the good work. It was great meeting you through Brandon and watching you be great at SU. And here's another one, Heidi. So proud of you, Will. I'm glad we met at the ARC Young Professionals Meetup. You have come a long way. Keep in touch with me and Kenny. Hoping Fort Hayes goes well. That's pretty cool. You are such the celebrity. Um, you have an amazing network and a, and a huge group of followers. Um, and that's so nice to see. Let me see what else is in here that I can pull up. Um, did you see anything, Will, in particular that you wanted to highlight? Um, yeah, like you, were, like you were gonna ask me about like mentioning like my role models. Yes, yes, yes. Please share. Thank you for reminding me. Please share um, your role models over these past four years and 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 what how they've helped you or what you've learned. Yeah. So yeah. So like I mean I've I've definitely like created relationships um, with um and with a bunch of people through um throughout my childhood and, um, and just in the last year and some of my role models are Liz Weintraub, who is a, a major disability advocate who works for the Association on University Centers on Disability, and just meeting her has been amazing. Kayla McEwen, a lobbyist from the National of Down Syndrome Society. Being able to be connected with Jason McElwain, who's also on the autism spectrum, who's coached basketball and, and, and has been an ESPY winner, ha has inspired me to stay around the game of basketball with having a disability. And, and Judy Human and getting to be connected with her this past July at the ODLD Symposium for, for Disability Law in Washington, D.C. And she was a leader in the disability rights movement. And, and, and she worked um, from, from the start and, and, and was one of the leaders for the independent living movement in Berkeley, California area, which is my mom's hometown, has inspired me to keep on advocating. And, and last not least, Coach Mike Shevsky, the head men's basketball coach, of Duke after spending eight summers as a camper at Duke Basketball Camp. He inspired me to be a great leader like he is. Wow. Thank you so much for highlighting, highlighting them. What plans do you have um, over the summer after graduation? What are you going to do before you head off to Fort Hayes? Yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to just help um, with some disability organizations and get connected with, um, with all of my friends and all my resources before I go because I'm supposed to leave towards possibly like the end, end of July, mm -hmm. pending right now with what's, what's going, um, on. going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see before we wrap up if there are any other, here we have a comment from Carol Go Alonzo. Hey Will, I have another meeting that I must attend. Thank you for inviting me to your presentation. I feel enlightened. You are still an amazing advocate. It's great to see how you are sharing those skills to make our world a better place. Say hi to your family for me. I really enjoy these comments that have been coming in from, from people who, who have joined us. Um, let me see if there's anything else before we wrap up. I think that is, someone said, maybe you'll come back someday. Leaders leave SU, but leaders come back. And that's true. We hope we definitely want to see you in the future. Um, I think that I think those are all of the questions we have. Do you have any final words or thoughts that you want to share before we before we close out? Yeah. Yeah. So I so first of all, like I just want to thank the fallen people for having it impact me. Like I want to thank my family, and my relatives through my amazing support throughout my life and being here from you. And thank you to all my family members and relatives that have tuned in today. And, and at Salisbury University, like I would have not been able to have an amazing experience without Dr. Thomas Boudreaux, the Department of Conflict Analysis and Dispute Resolution, Dr. Amber Meyer in our Department of Early Childhood and Elementary Education, who I have known since my first few days at Salisbury University and supporting me through changing my major at Salisbury University, a Alexandra Gunta Martin, who was just an amazing professor in the Department of Conflict Analysis and Dispute Resolution, who I'm still in, in touch with, um, as well as Brittany Fouts, who, Dr. Brittany Fouts, who has helped me throughout my senior year and developed me into a person that I've become. And thank you just for all the support you do 
Wayne Garo, who has given me a great four years of working in the Department of Campus Recreation as an intramural referee and supervisor, and Anna Hackborn, amazing support captain in that office for just getting to talk to me sometimes during the week throughout my last three years at Salisbury University, and to the amazing intramural staff, including my graduate assistants currently, Sydney Patterson, Mark Sterling, and, and Justin De, um, DeGrussen, and all the intramural supervisors and officials that I got to work with, Dr. Egan and John Murphy for allowing to help me throughout these last couple of years at Salisbury University, Susanna Mallow, who claims to be the president of my fan club. I just appreciate <laughs> all your support, and it's been, I mean, just amazing. Dr. Walton and Dr. Prey from our National Competitive Fellowships Office who have helped me throughout the process becoming a Fulbright alternate to Finland has just definitely been amazing. And all of my colleagues from the mayor's office in the city of Salisbury, including Julie English, Julia Glanz, Donna Haig, who's been there for me, Laura Baslin, who was in the mayor's office my first year as an intern, Chris Damone, like I really appreciate like all, all the conversations and chats and messages I get to have with you, Kim and Diane, and from the city clerk's office, you guys have just been amazing. And Becca Brown, just getting to know you, working alongside Chris this year has just been amazing. And my amazing boss for the past two times there, Andy Kitzra, has just been amazing and helped me go above and beyond. And Mayor Jake Day for always opening doors for me. Jenny Stonemeyer, the executive director of APSI, for opening her doors for me to be an intern for her and to her amazing team of Erica, Sarah, Julie, Arin, Kari. I mean, I really appreciate all of you guys so much for being there throughout me and getting to work with, with all you guys. And, and Ruthie Marie Beckwith, the executive director of Cash, for allowing me to be an intern for her and her amazing colleagues from Tash, including former amazing Tash interns in Bailey Hill, Katie Diner, and one of my best friends, Jake Goodman, who I've got to be an intern with there a couple times. Jake, I just want to give you a shout out that your support and conversations are amazing that I get to have with you. I want to give a shout out to my colleagues from Bolo City Kids Foundation who have allowed to work alongside me there. I'm, I'm going to give a shout out to Scott Gerson, one of my directors from Camp Howells, and Andy Ten Isaac for, for, for tuning in today, as well as all my disability advocacy friends who tuned in today, and, and all of my Salisbury University Hillel members and my amazing um, advisor, Owen Rostin, all of my Delta Alpha Pi executive board members for tuning in, all of my former teachers who have helped me so much and tuned in today, and all my former basketball coaches who tuned in today and the people that I got to coach with, including Grant Goff and Mike Capel. I just want to thank you guys for, for getting the opportunity to coach with and, and Brian McDermott as well for turning in. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to coach with you and, and all my new colleagues at Fort Hayes State University for tuning in today. I, I'm just so excited to spend the next two years working at your amazing campus and getting to grow and help you guys grow. I want to deeply thank Candace Henry. Your support has been amazing in energy during my college career. I'm going to miss you. And Matt Johnson, I just want to thank you for getting to know you this past year and for putting this on. It's definitely meant a lot to me. I want to give a thank you to Trisha Garvey-Smith, who's the Director of Student Involvement and Leadership for All, for support. Associate Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Wallace Sutherland for being with me the last three years, and Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Dane Faust for being a support. And, and I want to give a dear thank you to our provost, Dr. Karen Olmsted, who helped fund me to go to the TASH conference in Phoenix, Arizona, where I got to present and got to make a lot of connections. It, it's, it's truly appreciated for your support, and as well as your son, Lincoln, for being great support during my time at Salisbury University. And our Salisbury University president, Dr. Chuck White and Victoria Rasmussen for all your amazing support. I've really enjoyed getting to know all of you and, and miss you. And, and all of you guys have just meant so much to me. And I'm very proud to be a seagull for the rest of my life. Well, thank you so much. You are 
amazing. Congrats to you for all your accomplishments. Congrats for graduating. Congrats for all of the goals that you are fulfilling each and every day um, as a part of your vision for yourself. Let's stay connected. And thank you again for taking time out to be with us. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Yeah. And for you guys that want to connect me, I'm just going to type in my email address in the chat box Thanks. and my cell phone number for you guys um, as well, if you guys want to connect for any sort of reason. That will be great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for taking time out to join us today. We really appreciate you registering to be a part of this conversation. And um, be safe. And thank you again, Will. Take care, everyone. Yep.